What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at comparing different types of fullbacks, whether we use narrow fullbacks or wide fullbacks, and the implications they have on the other team and their own team. Now before we get into the video, I know it's been a while since I've posted and I'm trying to get back into a more regular posting about different concepts and international matches, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and also, if you want more tactical content, check out both my books in the description below. Let's get right into the video. So here we have a defensive mid block set up in a 4-4-2. From here, we then have our wide fullback. So we can right away highlight these fullbacks in these areas and notice that they have an increased distance from their central defenders. With this increased distance in the wide area, it forces the defense to shift across and cover the full width of the full width of the field. So from here, we'll notice it stretches the connections between the opposing team's midfielders and undoes the horizontal compactness of the opposing team. I will notice the winger is also very important for the fullback because they're in direct partnership in the same vertical corridor. And our winger here is just inverted slightly, pinning the opposing team's back line a bit more narrow creating more space in behind the midfielder. Now, also we'll notice with our wide fullback, it puts him further away from his defense, further away from his teammates in these areas, so it makes it harder for him to then connect passes, but also makes it easy for him to be isolated and potentially pressed. Now, when we drop our winger in the same line as our fullback, it stretches the opposing team's defense just a little bit, and potentially creates more space. From here, this is usually a starting position for these three players now, and can be a good situation for them to be in if they wanna move and create movement after an action. So if the ball is played, they could then simply invert or a player could rotate in and come out. But usually when we use dual width, it's a starting point and then giving better access and trying to clear space that the team will then use. So now we'll, we're going to look at wide. Now we're going to look at narrow fullbacks with wide wingers. And notice we separated the wide corridor just by this dotted line, and that's just to make it a better reference point on the positioning and staggering. Julian Nagelsmann uses this as exact separation in the wide area, and it's just nice to see the visual and the different tactical aspects from the inside part of the wide corridor and the outer part. But with a narrow fullback, we can see right away the connections to his teammates are much smaller, making it easier. And we have one added diagonal passing option into the wide area. It also forces the defense to defend across a more narrow shape, narrowing the press and the movement and the defensive action from the opposing team, making it more easy to play out of and potentially move into the wide area for a progression higher up the field and into the midfield third. This also puts the fullback in a better position to transition because it puts him closer to the middle of the field where he can then jump and prevent outlets from becoming free if possession was lost. Also, just by positioning this five yards further inward, it creates a more goal-oriented approach and allows the player to receive the ball, facing more of the field and having a better field of view. So this is where we're going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.